Hi, I'm Alan Ng. I was Zorian Kit, and today we reviewed Lansky. It's the biopic biopic of uh, famed gangster Maya Lansky, stars Harvey Keitel and Sam Worthington. Um, yeah, I uh, this is a mob movie, definitely a mob movie. It's also a biopic based on true stories, and it does something that I like in my biopics. Biopics, uh, you know, a lot of times it's you know these these films tend to be bookended by some kind of like, uh, here's a guy dying and he has to tell his story. In this one, they actually have two parallel stories running together. And I, I found that interesting. Uh, not only is it of Lansky's life, but it's now of, there's a sub, a B story of how the book, the book was written. Uh, what did you think of Lansky uh, well, and this uh, way of doing things? Well, I, you said B story. I, I think I would venture to say that this is a B movie, really, honestly. Uh -huh. I, I think when you have, when you look at the history of gangster movies, let's face it, these stories about these men have been told over and over and over again. When you have, you know, a level of mob, mafia movies like Scorsese does or um, Coppola did, uh, David Chase more recently, uh, like that, that is up here. And then you have like that awful John Travolta gaudy movie, which is like, you know, down here. <laughs> so Lansky is, Lansky is like maybe like just kind of like right here, you know, yeah. that's, it's like, it's below the halfway mark. Um, yeah, it doesn't have a lot of the frills that you get like in The Godfather or or Goodfellas, it's, it's you know, you can tell it's somewhat of a, a, a low budget, mid budget indie film. Yeah. Um, you know, the, you know, you, you have your pr typical production values, but in terms of violence, in terms of uh, the need for special effects and stunts, it's it's not, there's not a lot of it there. It's, it's basically a straightforward telling of the story minus the mob thrills, so to speak. Well, you know, when I feel, when I look at, like I'm gonna use the Irishman as an example because I, that's like that was the last uh, one of the last mob movies that I saw. You know, I was completely engrossed in the characters and completely invested in them, and I feel like emotionally I was into them. Uh, uh, there are certain characters I was, you know, kind of. Uh, fearful of that they would fly off the handle or do something. You never know, you know, quite how these gangsters are going to be operating. So you have your own kind of um, fears or stressors as you're watching a movie because you don't know when someone's going to get whacked or when someone's going to uh, fly off the handle. And that's what you that's and that's done by design when when you know, you have Coppola mm -hmm. or Scorsese or, or David Chase in The Sopranos uh, that caliber. But here I never once felt fearful or, or uh, I mean, I felt nothing towards these characters. Bottom line, I felt zero sympathy, zero empathy, uh, zero emotional investment in these characters. And yeah. everyone feared what was gonna happen because I, I, it just wasn't there. That buildup wasn't right. there. Yeah, and I think uh, to me, maybe, maybe, uh, you know, I'm feeling like I liked it better than you did. Um, but it felt more like a biopic than it did a mob movie. Um, you know, it, there is no, you know, classic, you know, the, to me, the, the most indelible moments of The Godfather were were the uh, string of, of killings. There's nothing like that in here. It, it's, a, it's a very straightforward, here's this guy, here's his life, and we present it just like every other biopic. And... Well and you know, and and I I like the second story, the uh, you know the the drama behind getting the story told with the feds trying to find Lansky's money, uh, and I liked it only because it it uh, broke up the, you know, it broke up your typical biopic where you just move from one moment to the next. <laughs> now we have this kind of second story that kind of breaks things up, and oh. I, I liked it. That's that's kind of what improved it for me. So my issue was was that this B story served as the excuse to show his life in the sense that you have Harvey Keitel playing Lansky and for pretty much his portion of the film, it's just him sitting in a coffee shop or sitting somewhere on a park bench and reciting a monologue basically about this is what his life was like. And and then these vignettes play out. That's one thing I, 
you know, what you're saying is true. It, he is sitting at a coffee shop or uh, or in a car talking about his life. But for some reason, I really liked how Harvey Keitel did it. Because um, I, really? I, I, I did. I did. It was interesting. It, You know, it, I see so many of these um, biopic movies that, you know, to see something done above average just really stands out to me. And I, I felt like that was happening here. Um, and then to your point about emotionally invested, you know, I was... I think for me, it's not necessarily the storytelling that left me not emotionally invested, but it was this idea of, you know, we're we're in this way glorifying the life of a very bad man. He does some very horrendous things here. And, you know, really the movie kind of, you know, if if it doesn't, it got really close to kind of painting him as a hero in a way. But well, it doesn't help that the end credits say, "Oh, he pioneered the casino business." Yeah, what was that about? <laughs> he created right. X number of jobs for X number of people. Like, like yeah. oh, was, it, was that the point of the movie? Was was this is the the result? Uh, you know, the <laughs> casinos. It makes a quarter billion. It makes two hundred billion and. Uh, it makes two hundred fifty billion dollars a year, and it employs so many people. I'm not sure that was the the point of Lansky's life. Exactly, exactly. But to your thing about how you liked how um, you liked that the the modern day situation between like the author who's writing his uh, uh, biography then flashes to those scenes. I, I mean, the, it I. I think it it could have been done better. And we've seen stuff like that done better in other films. Like take The Notebook, for example, classic film. Starts off a couple in a hospital bed. They're old, you know. She's She's got Alzheimer's or she doesn't remember. And he's there and he tells her the story of how they met. And so the film goes back and forth between mm -hmm. this beautiful love story and we are invested and that's a movie that also kind of goes in in kind of these scenes and jumps as we follow but 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 that film the whole world was invested in this love story here yeah. there's no investment is you don't hate the guy you don't like him either you, mm -hmm. you don't disrespect him you don't respect him like you, there's just it's there's no emotion that this film elicits. And if you're going to take on these iconic characters, I mean, you have a point. And there is no filmmaking style. The director doesn't have a point of view or a uh, a, a style that that is that is signature. Yeah, and, and that's why I'll keep harping on the fact that this is much more biopic than... Um, than a mob film. I mean, it reminds me. It's it's a better version of the Helen Reddy biopic we saw last year. I um, like the uh, Helen Reddy movie better than this, though. Well, but in terms of storytelling, it was uh, more interesting. I, I look. I'm not giving this a glowing review, but it's it does a lot of things that I that I appreciated because it you know as much as it is a biopic, it doesn't. It does the tropes better than than most. Uh, the the other thing is there's one thing where feds are after Lansky. They want to use him. They they frame him to to get information about Lansky and and you know and they they set up this whole thing of don't betray me. You know where Lansky says I'll let you do this, but don't ever betray me. And inevitably, you know he's he's going to and he does. Yeah. And yeah. and what it what this movie does that I hate in in movies like this is it just lets him off the hook. It says, "Oh, you betrayed me. You, you, um, you know, you were like a son to me. Uh, you know, and and it let him off the hook, and we continue on our story. So it it built this tension that just deflates midway through. And I'm like, you know, I don't know if that happened in real life. That happened in real life, but this no, is this, you know, this is drama. In real life. That that this is a fictional writer doing like that part wasn't that part mm -hmm. wasn't real. Uh, uh, oh, okay." So, uh, so it's it's just that was the fictional situation where the the vignettes then of course are real. But by the way, the vignettes are just like the filmmaker m may as well have just looked on Wikipedia and been like, okay, I'm gonna recreate this. I'm gonna recreate this, and I'm gonna recreate this, mm -hmm. and I'll just have Harvey uh, Harvey Keitel, uh, you know, do a monologue over this as I show you know my dramatization of this. I just I just thought it was just. 
it lacked filmmaking style, lacked any feeling or emotion or investment in the characters. And it's, it, you know, it was tedious right. for me to watch. It was extremely tedious. Okay. So clearly you weren't whelmed at all no. uh, by Lansky. Um, yeah, you just mentioned it all there. Uh, I'm going to guess you gave it a five, yes. maybe a four. Five. Yes. Yeah. I give it a five. I give it a five. Like I said, you know, Scorsese, Chase, yeah. uh, we're all here. Yes, I agree. It's been done yes. way better. <laughs> yes. Okay. This is like right up my chin. This is where this movie is. <laughs> so I uh, really, it's, you know, eh. yeah. yeah. Uh, well, you did like it much more than I did. You did. Uh, I don't know, like you, the things that I hated, you seem to be very forgiving about. Um, you know, personally, I think giving it a seven is way too high. So I would hope in your case, you maybe gave it a six, but I don't yeah. know, you gave it a yeah. seven. I gave it a six and a half, and and for the reasons you stated, I, I did enjoy it uh, in, in the way that, you know, I would, you know, if it was playing again in the background, I would watch it. I'm I'm fascinated by stories like this. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah, I am forgiving of a lot of things because it does do things in in, in biopics that uh, that has been done badly in the past, and maybe it's maybe I've been beaten so badly by bad um, biographic movies that uh, this one just stood out. So <laughs> that's why I'm going to give it that six and a half. Uh, All right. <laughs> okay. So with that, be sure to like, subscribe, let us know what you thought of Lansky. It's in theaters now. And with that, let's get out of here.